a statement. I hadn't seen this till now, but you guys look at Duke Monday's stat line. And my God, 26 points on 10 on 17 shots, six rebounds, six assists, no turnovers, and four steals. That's a pretty good stat. No wonder we won. Coach, talk about just that. Talk about the efficiency here tonight. You guys lost the rebounding battle, lost the free throw battle, but you were efficient. Yeah, you know, we had four turnovers, they had 14, and that was huge. But uh, if you ask me what are you most disappointed in today, you know, if you've dissected, well, one of the things we've been really good at this year, and I thought it was going to be our biggest weaknesses, and you've heard me say this before, is rebounding, especially the defensive end. You know, we have a, a really good rebounder in Petros at the defensive end. We have a really good rebounder in Valentine, and then we have some maybe rebounders. But all year long we fought, fought and battled, and nobody's really hurt us on the boards. I thought they did in the second half. We got them to start missing, but they were getting the ball back, and they kind of manhandled us a little bit. It looked like they were pushing us around, and we kept getting called for fouls, so they must have, we must have pushed back, and they saw that. I, I got to watch the tape. Um, you know, I wasn't real happy with some of the things that were going on out there, so once I watch the tape, then I'll have a better opinion. But I thought that was the bad. The bad was the rebounding. But, you know, we, we, we never, never – did anything stupid, and that was the key. I thought we played a really smart last seven, eight minutes of the game. And the difference between this team and the team that blew the game at Pittsburgh is this team believes they're good now and they believe they can win. When you have that going for you and you believe you're not going to lose, you, you usually don't. Would you say this is the best you've seen your team play this year? I think this last week. I mean, we, we this game of stretch we're on, we, we won, we, we beat Western Illinois in a different way than we won Thursday and then we won today. And that's the, that's the, we won 66 to, 67 to 60, 66, 63, and now we won 88, 83. That's a sign of a good basketball team, all right? When you, when you can play different ways and win. And so now that we're doing that and again that confidence level and then we beat Omaha on the road 90 something to 81 and you know we were behind in that game. In, with 10 minutes to go and, and so it's, it's really been a good two weeks the team is really getting better and I'm excited about them I think I think they got a chance we, you know we lack depth but you know what look at the number of kids they played too and the top teams in this league are really good this year but every one of them lacks depth uh, coach you briefly mentioned it before but the turnover differential there between 14 and 4 and is that just like you said, them being smart with the ball, and then also the pride, uh, like Duke was talking about, the pride. Well, defense. I think so. I do think that, you know, they're not a team that's pressures, but we had double-digit turnovers against them last time because you try and make plays you can't make. We really in the, we really ran our offense well with the dribble drive. You know, and a lot of people don't like to dribble drive, um, but since we've been running it, we win a lot of games, we score a lot of points. But you get a couple handoffs and a couple loops in misdirection going, and all of a sudden we're, we're driving at the basket shooting layups. And in the clutch time of the game, we were shooting layups and they were shooting jump shots. And I think that was the difference, you know. So uh, we didn't turn the ball over. We beat them off on a couple handoffs and, and, and that, and that's to me, was the difference in the game. I just also realized we're 13-13 13 13 now. It's been a long climb after that schedule. And uh, I think the last time November I had, 11th. Yeah, I think we were. At one point, we were seven and thirteen, or something like that, weren't we? And all of a sudden, we're thirteen and thirteen, or eight and thirteen. Do you talk uh, specifically about the defensive effort, the different people who uh, help, you know, guard against Nate Walters? How do you think he performed uh, coming back after that fifty-three point outing? Oh, it was great. He threw one in, falling down, backwards. That's the thing Michael Jordan does, right? LeBron does those things. You don't see guys in the Summit League doing those things. I mean, he was falling down backwards and threw it in the basket. So he's a great player. <laughs> we're gonna, hopefully we're going to see him one more time. And then uh, I'll never have to worry about him again. He'll be a memory, a bad one. Uh, the guy I want to talk about is Dykstra. you got to give Drew Valentine some props. And, and we really challenged Drew and in a way that couldn't be repeated in a family show because Dykstra has killed us. He's averaging 20 points a game against Oakland in his career and like nine against the rest of the league. And we held him to five points tonight. And I will tell you that he was, Drew Valentine was challenged in, in no uncertain terms about this. And he was raised to the challenge and did a heck of a job. You touched earlier on the rotation you went with. I think it, um, 
besides my approaches coming in later to give one of the six guys. Yeah, that's all we went because they weren't substituted. So if they, their guys can play 40 minutes, well, they have four guys play 40 minutes. If they got four guys that can play 40, why can't mine? Uh, you, that would be telling me that they do a better job of conditioning than we do, and that would be a, a, a embarrassing to me if somebody did that. So I didn't need to substitute. Now, the other reason was because I liked Dante Williams on, we rotated different, three different guys on uh, Walters, and I liked a 6'6 kid on him for a while just to change a pace. Worked so well, we held him to 36. But he had 53 yesterday or Thursday, so maybe we did do a good job on Coach, with these two big victories here over the Summit League leaders, he had, he had 89 points in two games. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> these two big victories over back to back Summit leaders, does this lessen the blow for you, the fact that they got rid of the iron from Monopoly? No, that's still. That, that, ruined, no that ruined my week. There's no that ruined down. my week. Yeah. If they get rid of the Slurpee, I'm done. <laughs> Do you think your team uh, maybe felt it? in some way invincible with the streak and the fact that, that they've already beaten two of some of the league's best teams here? Yeah, I, I mean, we harp on that. You know, we harp and harp and harp on it. We don't lose in February and we don't lose at all. And that debacle that we had a few weeks ago helped. You know, you know, we can say that's kept us out of first place, but I don't know if we'd be as good as today as we are if we hadn't lost that game. So, you know, you, sometimes you got to stub your toe, and we did that night, and refocused and changed some things. And, and this team believes a lot in themselves, and you know I got some really good players. I mean, Petros really struggled tonight. I mean, that layup he missed in the first half was a big play of the game. We had bolted out to a seven-point lead. We had all the momentum in the world. They scored. He misses a flat-out layup, and then we foul a three-point shooter, and the whole half changed. The whole half changed. Um, so you know he had 23 against these guys the first time, and you know they they were going to stop him, and they doubled him. And, so he didn't have his greatest game, and yet we still won. And so it's a good sign that, yeah, Bader was 9 of 16. Yeah, Monday was good, but it wasn't like everybody was just unbelievable and we just were lucky or something like that. We just played good. And so did they. Had to be a very entertaining game. Had to be. Uh, Coach, players kind of touched on it earlier, but um, in the first half with the last six minutes of regulation, you didn't score until that final buzzer beater. Uh, and we've seen that somewhat earlier this season, a couple games, but uh, there was a halftime adjustment and you definitely came out. So what was what, what did you say at halftime? Well, I wasn't real happy about a few things, and I voiced my opinion of those few things. Uh, we really didn't adjust anything defensively. Um, and then offensively, we decided that we were just going to run more dribble drive than any sets. And the dribble drive really hurt them. So we just stuck with it. We, we, those last six minutes of the half were just poorly played. You know, the momentum went away from us, and nobody grabbed it and, and took it back. And You know, I think Michigan, number one team in the country, have those things happen to them. You know, the key isn't that that happened. The key is how you react to it. And we got back, and that was the key. Throughout the whole season, your team has shown an ability to get up for the big games, even after, you know, early on in the season going into Pitt. I mean, you guys below 500 back then, too. Put up a good fight there, put up a fight in West Virginia and at West Virginia. Is there some characteristic about this team where, you know, they, uh, you know, make some, I guess, fearless or, you know? I think it's a team that's talented that just doesn't know how good they were. Just didn't believe how good they were and didn't know it. You know, everybody told them they weren't going to be any good. You lost the leading scorer in the country. Uh, you know, I think people don't remember. They talk about Duke Monday right now. People don't remember that Reggie Hamilton, his first 10 or 12 games here were crap. They don't remember that he wasn't even on the floor when we beat Tennessee. They know that he was the, you know, average 20 points a game in the Summit League tournament and led us to 26 against Texas. And did all. But if you go back to his first 10 or 12 games, most transfers, especially scoring transfers, struggle with our system. And you wouldn't think they would because our system lets you go. But they got to learn within the system. I, I mean, I get mad at Bader for not shooting. And I'll show you tape. There's three guys on Bader when he shoots. Who's going to get the, his misses? We rebound more of his misses than any kid I've ever coached because the whole world's flying at him. So when he doesn't shoot, he's being selfish. Now, we had to teach Duke our system, and now that he's learning it, and the other side of that isn't, I have to learn Duke, too. 
and I have to, I can't be stubborn and say, no, it's this way or no way, you know. It's this way, Duke, but if you do it our way, I'm going to let you do what you do well. And that's what we're learning. I'm learning about him, he's learning us, and we're starting to come together, and you can see it's really helping the team. Just, I think there were only five turnovers on Thursday, just four today. You guys just keep cutting back on those. What's been the, what's had the biggest impact? I mean, you're playing against better teams, and the turnovers are being reduced. Focus, understanding the value of a possession, understanding that you know we we've screwed up in the season because of turnovers and because of stupid plays and things like that. And now we're learning, and that's that's the characteristic of a young team. Any more questions for Coach? All right, thanks a lot, Coach. All right, thank thanks you. Thanks for your time. Yep. Golden Grizzlies will be on the road for the next three games.